We're here at the Critter Camp Exotic Pet Sanctuary in German Valley, Illinois. This sanctuary takes in animals that are different than cats and dogs and gives them their forever home. This sanctuary is run by a wonderful woman named Beth Randall, who uh, got her start by taking in a, a ferret and then a gerbil, hedgehog, parakeet, and next thing you know, people are bringing her their pets that they could no longer take care of. So today with her help, we're going to learn five exotic facts about five exotic pets. So let's go inside and see what Beth has to show us. Number five. Our number five spot is a highly active little critter, although they sleep for 17 hours a day. These guys love to explore every nook and cranny of the house or room that they're in and their little Houdinis as well. They're my personal favorite pets and they're super fun to be around and they're super playful as well. This is the carpet shark or cat snake or limousine mouse, tube sock with legs, or the domesticated ferret or Mustela putorios furros, which means smelly weasel thief. I am not joking, and I love it. <laughs> no one is quite sure why or how the ferrets became domesticated, but uh, they descend from the European polecats. Scientists believe they were domesticated 2,500 years ago by the ancient Greeks and were used for hunting rabbits, mice, rats, and other vermin. Matter of fact, they're still used for hunting today in a practice what's known as ferreting. Ferrets are amazing pets, but like all animals, they must be socialized and adjusted to people. Ferrets are not recommended for children younger than 12 because they can bite and get aggressive if not handled properly. Ferrets live well in tall, multi-level cages, but love to stretch their legs and run amok around the house or room. They are social animals and require cage mates. Ferrets aren't good pets if you're away often because they are high maintenance. They require exercise outside the cage daily, constant cage cleaning, fresh water, and litter box training as well. They are very sneaky and like to find places to hide. If their head fits inside, the rest of their body will too. Depending on their health, ferrets can live to be 6 to 12 years old, ensuring they see the vet on schedule, get their proper vaccines, and have time to run and play outside their cage every day, and are fed the proper food, ferrets can live well into their golden years. They are obligate carnivores and can only digest animal products and need a very high protein diet. Their digestive system is very short, so they have to have bowel movements every three hours or so. They can be trained to walk on a leash. Their odor, however, is lessened by getting them spayed and neutered, which most, most pet stores and rescues have already done. Also, some states and even some countries have banned owning a ferret, so make sure your cat snake is legal before adopting one. Let's talk about wild ferrets. Black-footed ferrets are North America's rarest mammal. Back in the 1960s, they were thought to be extinct, but in 1986, 18 of them were found. Scientists took those 18 and exclusively bred them. All black-footed ferrets alive today come descended from those 18 ferrets. Scientists would take new ferrets and put them in what's known as ferret boot camp, which is where they would take them to uh, learn how to live in the wild, hunt prey, and avoid predators. They would teach them how to avoid predators by placing a stuffed badger on an RC car lovingly named Robo Badger. Right now, there are over 300 black-footed ferrets in the wild today.
If you do get a ferret, however, make sure you ferret away all your small objects. If your ferret has the run of the house or the room and you notice that your keys or wallet are missing, well, they're not called smelly little weasel thieves for nothing. Ferrets love foam, plastic, or anything they can drag away, and they even have stash piles that they'll keep their new treasures in as well. You have to monitor your ferret, however, because they do not have the ability to throw up, and if they swallow anything non-edible, it is potentially life-threatening. So be sure to keep an eye on your smelly little thief, and make sure you have a uh, ferret-savvy vet at hand at all times as well. Ferret proofing is essential before bringing your little guys home. And if you need more resources, well, they're in the description below. Number four. spot is a prickly little friend. These bashful little creatures roll up into a ball when scared, they're immune to some venoms, and they make wonderful little pets for your home. This is the African Pygmy Hedgehog, or Adelarix albaventris. Despite their similar appearances, hedgehogs and porcupines are not the same, nor are they closely related. Porcupines are rodents where hedgehogs make up their own family, Aranacidae. Porcupines have quills that mostly face the back, and hedgehogs have evenly placed spines all throughout their back. Porcupine spines can detach easily to ward off predators and even stab them, whereas hedgehog spines don't fall off at all unless they're babies who are growing into their adult spines. Plus, the difference is in the looks, too. This is a porcupine, and this sweet little girl is a hedgehog. Hedgehog spines are made out of stiff material known as keratin. Keratin is made of the same stuff that your hair and nails are made out of. It's also the same stuff that is in rhino horns, bird feathers, bird beaks, claws, hoofs, stingray stingers, fish scales, and much more. It's an adaptable tool that most mammals and other animals use as well. Hedgehogs use their spine to protect themselves against predators. They'll roll up into a ball and their spines will stick out to make themselves look like a not so appetizing meal. Baby hedgehogs, however, are born covered in a fluid uh, and soft spines in order to protect the mother as she gives birth. Are you snuffling? Oh my goodness, you're so cute. As pets, they are incredibly wonderful friends and they bond deeply with their owners. Some hedgehogs, when scared, will ball up and only come out to their owner's voice and smell. They do require socialization, time, trust, and love. Unsocialized hedgehogs will remain paranoid and jumpy and it will be hard to see them outside their ball shape. They have to have large solid wheels because they can run 5 to 10 miles a night and they poop inside those wheels and walk in it forming poop boots, which need to be washed off constantly. If you want to have a fun friend like a hedgehog in your life, please allow them time to bond with you and you'll have made a friend for life. Some states ban owning hedgehogs, so please make sure you live in a place where your hedge friend is legal. Hedgehogs engage in a practice known as self-anointing. What that is, is whenever they encounter a new scent, they'll bite and lick at that object and then create a frothy spitball with, in, with their mouth with that new scent. They'll throw their heads back to cover their entire body in that spitball so that way they can smell like their new surroundings. This is a great way to camouflage themselves, attract mates, and even hide from predators. Ow. Ow, ow, ow. I love her. Ow, ow. They are insectivores, but not completely. Pet hedgehogs require a high-protein diet, which they can get from high-quality cat food, 
cooked chicken and eggs, plus superworms and mealworms. Hedgehogs in the wild are very important to humans where they live naturally as they are a part of pest control. They eat the bugs in people's gardens and will help make the gardens healthier. Pet hedgehogs, however, shouldn't eat bugs from American backyards since those bugs can be poisonous to them. In ancient Greece, hedgehogs were used to determine if spring was on its way or if another six weeks of winter was staying. Sort of like a certain animal that gets celebrated here in America. Number three. Our number three spot is burrowing their way as popular pets. You may hear the name and think of old western animals or maybe even American meerkats, but these guys are not related. They live in groups known as coteries and they're cute as pie, but are they as sweet as pie? This is the uh, black-tailed prairie dog or Sonomis ludovicianos. Prairie dogs are small rodents that live in burrows in Central and Western North America. The most common are the black-tailed prairie dogs, which is seen here. They're the one that's most commonly kept as pets. They're part of the squirrel family, and like squirrels and rodents in general, they need to constantly chew to keep their incisors from growing too big. Prairie dogs as pets is something that you'd have to look at through their eyes. Do you have time to commit to them? Do you have time to socialize and bond with them when they're a young age? Well, these aren't animals that you can share with your friends like dogs, and they are most definitely not for families with small children. Prairie dogs do bite. They bite when they want to protect their home and family, and if you're family to them, they might bite your guests. Prairie dogs can be a bit aggressive at times. If you own a ferret, do not get a prairie dog. They are natural enemies and your ferret could seriously injure your prairie dog. In the wild, prairie dogs are a staple diet and resource for a variety of animals. Black-footed ferrets primarily eat prairie dogs and then use their burrows as homes. Coyotes, eagles, foxes, and around 130 different types of species benefit from preying on them or utilizing their abandoned network of tunnels. According to wildlife conservation biologist Christy Bly, quote, they are basically the chicken nuggets of the grasslands. What's amazing is that prairie dogs have very unique vocalizations. Now, they may sound like chee 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 to the untrained ear, but in fact, they have different words for each of their dangers, including coyotes, foxes, eagles, hawks, and even humans. And what's cool is that they can even describe the danger as well, such as human with yellow shirt or human with blue shirt. This was discovered by Professor Khan Slobodchikov of Northern Arizona University. They have the most advanced vocabulary of any other an animal decoded. Prairie dogs are very social animals. They live in social groups and they communicate with each other. Unless you get one very young and you spend a lot of time with them, you need to get them a friend. Make sure that you do your research and talk to prairie dog professionals or your local exotic pet vet to make sure that prairie dogs are right for you and your adult family. Number two. Number two 
Sunspot is slowly crawling their way into our hearts. They are the largest of their mainland kind and they can live to be 80 to 100 years old. They can weigh over 200 pounds and they're from the northern African deserts and scrublands. This is the African Spurred Tortoise or Giacciolone centricellus sulcata. These guys are adorable as babies and can fit in the palm of your hand. They are often sold at reptile shows and conventions. You can keep a baby tortoise in a 20 gallon tank at around 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, but after a few years, you have to get a bigger tank. A much bigger tank. They can weigh over 200 pounds as stated before, and they do eat a lot of veggies. They don't get fully sexually mature until about 15. Don't think that they'll live as long as a cat or dog though. Tortoises, like some parrots, are known as will animals, as in they live so long you have to put them in your will and pass them to a younger friend. Tortoises can live to be from 80 to 120 years old. Sadly though, because not enough information is given to owners when they buy the babies, some people think it's a good idea to abandon their pets out in the wild. This is a terrible idea because not only can it cause the immediate destruction and death of your domesticated pet, but it can also cause destruction to native animals and native plants as well. Please research rescues in your area if you absolutely need to rehome your friend. Tortoises are great pets if you have a large yard with the appropriate plants for feeding. They can even take shelter in dog houses, but it's always best to bring them inside for the night. Always have the proper heating for them and the proper setups. They are not cuddly animals, but some do love being pet. Due to their high dietary fiber needs, grasses should account for a minimum of 75% of their food intake. To remain healthy, they require sufficient calcium for bone and shell development, low protein, and minimal fruit or sugary foods. Whereas wild tortoises obtain enough calcium from the soil, pets generally require calcium supplements. If treated incorrectly, their shells may become deformed in a myriad of ways. Young tortoises grow quickly and can double in size each year during the first three years. Many wet vegetables such as lettuce, kale, and other collard greens cause health problems in large quantities, but prickly pear cactus pads, hibiscus leaves, hay from various grasses, and dandelions are generally safe. Some common garden plants such as azaleas are toxic to tortoises. Lack of calcium combined with high protein contributes to shell malformations and what is known as pyramiding. Tortoises are voracious and sometimes overeat. Some tortoises take in excessive protein by eating caterpillars and snails. Rambo here came to critter camp with severe pyramiding. After several years of care, her shell is starting to regain health. And number one. Our number one spot is the smallest canid in the world. They have big ears to allow them to listen to prey and to cool off in the dry, arid climate of their home. They live in the Sahara Desert, but can cost almost $2,000 to bring one home. This is the fennec fox, or Vulpus zerta. Fennec foxes, as cute as they are, are not cats or dogs. They are challenging pets to keep and take care of. You might see cute videos of people having fennec foxes and playing with them and cuddling them, but each fox is unique and they all have different personalities and traits. 
They're not cuddly all the time, and wanting to be pet can be fleeting moments, and not to mention they can't be trained like dogs. They recognize behaviors such as refrigerator means food, or opening a door means outside, or etc., but they don't respond when called, and they don't sit, stay, roll over. Because of this, if they run away, it's nearly impossible to get them to come back. They don't do well on leashes, and it's very difficult to potty train them. They are very high-maintenance friends and require a very extensive amount of research and a high amount of care. Foxes in general use their urine to mark their territory. If you're outside at night and you think that you smell a skunk, it might very well be a fox. Foxes carry a very powerful odor that lets other animals know that this is their territory. Fennecs are the same way. They have a very powerful odor, but to combat that, it's recommended you get them spayed and neutered. Foxes do not use litter boxes, but some people have found success using potty pads. Fennecs are little balls of energy. They love to dig and run and bounce around. They're nocturnal too, so if you're not already a night owl, they might keep you up at night. They do well in their own bedrooms, but some people have large ferret cages they keep the fox in for the night. If you don't give your fox enough to do to quell their boredom during the day, they'll keep you up all night. This is an animal you must devote a lot of time and attention to. This isn't a get them and forget them animal. They need that devotion from you. They are meat eaters, no matter what you hear or see on the internet. And they'll eat insects, rodents, uh, small mammals, and lizards, birds, and they'll even eat roots, fruits, and leaves, and that's how they get their hydration. They've been known to hunt and kill prey as big as themselves, like full-grown rabbits. Benix use their large ears to not only listen for prey deep in the sand, but also as a way of cooling off in the hot, dry desert. These guys love to dig because in the desert, they dig to keep out of the sun during the hottest part of the day. Now, if you have a fennec fox at home, make sure that your fence goes down deep far enough because fennec foxes can dig down to 10 feet. There are many more resources you can look up to see if fennecs are right for you. There are way too many factors to list here, and if you do want more info, then all the resources you need are in the description below. Foxes are wonderful animals, they're great for the ecosystem, and they're great for their environment. If you do see a wild fox just minding their own business, well, you can stop and look at how wonderful and beautiful they are, but please don't try to pet them or approach them. Wild foxes are dangerous and can attack. For this reason, it is always a good idea to keep your cats and dogs inside or supervised outside at all times. If any of these beautiful animals seem like someone that you want to bring home, make sure you do your research and talk to exotic pet professionals and veterinarians before you decide to add them to your family. You can even call and talk to Beth as well, and she'll point you in the right direction. Her phone number and her address is listed in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us, and make sure that you uh, like our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon page. You can even go to Facebook and join Beth's Critter Camp on Facebook as well. So we hope you had a really great time and we'll see you next time on Kiki's Fun Animal Facts. Bye. Bye. You dropped the bomb? Yeah. Good girl. Can you peekaboo? Peekaboo. Good girl. How about a whistle bomb? No, you gotta get down. Good girl. You may have it. You're a good girl. Critter Camp is an amazing place to go where you can learn about exotic pets. They got their start 15 years ago by taking in pets that couldn't be cared for or even adopted out. They do tours of their hundreds of friends, but it's by appointment only, so give them a call. They operate with volunteers and donations, so if you want to help out, go to their Facebook page and donate. 
get a shirt, or even start a charity. They are helping animals by providing a safe, healthy, and happy forever home to unadoptable, exotic, and unusual pets. And remember, only when people care about every animal will all animals be safe. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.